Now, here's Ed Bernstein. Hi, our guests today are Steve Sisolak, uh, Clark County Commission Chairman, person. Right. Is it chairperson or chairman? How do you, uh, what is the like proper way fine. to say it? Steve anyway. is fine. Steve, chairman, Steve fine. Sisolak. Good. Thank and you. a little bit later on in the show, uh, Congresswoman Dina Titus will be here. Right. So you and I were talking before we went on the air, and I was asked you to imagine if you, you're running for election for another term this year, mm -hmm. if right. you were to visualize how you'd like to leave the county commission and what Las Vegas would look like by the time you left, what would that image look like? I think that there's a couple areas we need a little bit more improvement. We've really made drastic improvement when it comes to UMC, the hospital. Uh, for the first time, it's operating in a positive. Uh, I think they've done a great job with uh, underinsured and uninsured folks in terms of it covered under the Affordable Care Act, so the hospital is doing better. The one area I think that we're still lacking a little bit is employment. Uh, we still have a lot of people that are out of work. There's a tremendous amount of people that are underemployed. You know, they've taken some job, they've gotten out of their career. We've lost, as construction has picked up and some of our growth has picked up, we've lost, lost a lot of skilled, skilled craftspeople that left last time around when the work dried up and they went somewhere else and they're a little hesitant to come back till they see that this is really moving forward. So I'd like to see the employment picture stabilize a little bit and I'd like to see those couple projects get going on Las Vegas Boulevard in the next couple of years. I'd like to see that hopefully come to fruition and hopefully have an NFL team playing here by the time I leave. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of other people yeah. that agree with on that issue with you. And what, what is the status of getting an NFL team here? We're in the midst of, you know, the SNTIC committee that the governor appointed to, to study the issue. And it's, it's a very complex negotiation because you've got so many moving parts. You've got the developers, you've got the Sands, majestic folks on their end, and then you've got the Raiders. Uh, who are really separate from this, they're investing to the team owners, and you've got the public side and everybody's got to make a contribution and you've got to come up with a way that there's some return on the contribution, what's fair, what's fair for the public to put in as opposed to the private side put in and uh, so that it's not competing too much with the other private sector. You don't want the stadium to compete with the T-Mobile or the Thomas and Mac, it's really for different type of events. So hopefully we can make that come, come to fruition. Do you ever get the impression that uh, that Oakland may be posturing, you know, with Las Vegas to try to improve their bargaining position? Yeah, I, I, at the beginning, I had that impression. And I'll be honest with you, I definitely had that impression at the at the beginning. But after meeting Mark Davis a few times and talking to him, and more so than Mark Davis is uh, Mark Bedine. I mean, the the Bedine, the president of the Raiders. He is a genuine individual. There is no doubt in my mind whatsoever. They're serious. They want to move here. Whether or not they can make it happy is another story, and make it happen is another story. And I spoke to him when there was a renewed effort to build another stadium in Oakland, and he said, no, we're committed. We'd like to be the Las Vegas Raiders. This is where they want to call home and make it home. And he's made a commitment. If we would build a stadium, that they would commit. Because one of the fears have been that they'd pack up shop and leave You know, a couple of years later, because they bounced around a little bit the last couple of decades. And he said they'd commit in writing that they would stay for the term of the bonds, which, are, which is 20 or 25 years on those bonds. So that's a long-term commitment to the community. I don't know if you, maybe you'll remember this. Years ago um, in Oakland, they built a baseball stadium. And the, uh, the stadium wasn't ready opening day for, for, uh, for a game. Mm -hmm. So they held the game here in Las Vegas at Cashman Field. This was, you know, early wow. 80s. I don't remember that. that. Wow. It was the first time that uh, Las Vegas ever hosted a, a professional right. sports event, a, you know, major league team in, in Las Vegas. So we do have some sort of history with Oakland. You know, it's just kind of trivia. But, and, and there yeah. are a lot of fans. There's a tremendous amount yeah. of Oakland fans here. And, and I think what's changed the whole landscape, Ed, frankly, is Bill Foley. I mean, when he brought an NHL hockey team yeah. here that no one thought Las Vegas would be the home of a professional sports franchise, be it baseball or basketball or football or hockey. And when he, so, so to speak, broke through that ceiling and got an NHL franchise to be lo unnamed yet to be located in Las Vegas, I think he set the mark. And I think other uh, franchises are now looking at our community in terms of having the capacity to support a professional franchise. And I think that we're going to see a few more in the next uh, decade or so. When you look at this as a county commissioner and you look at, well, how's this going to help, you know, the, the county? How's it going to bring tourism dollars mm -hmm. into Vegas? Is it really a, 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 a lot of tourists that come to, let's, let's say uh, Chicago is playing here in, uh, whether in the hockey or the, or, the, or, the, uh, or the football team. Right. So I assume they're going to have junkets and, and uh, you right. know, and, and bring in, you know, fans from those cities to watch the, the local 
their yeah. local team play Las Vegas. They absolutely do. I went down this past uh, winter right after Christmas. I went down to watch a Green, I'm a Green Bay Packer fan. I'm an owner of the Packers. I own one share of the Packers. That's how they <laughs> raise their money. Uh, I went down to watch the Packers play the Cardinals. And I was shocked how many folks have, they make it a like a bucket list item that they want to go to all of the NFL stadiums. Right. That they pick one or two away games every year that they make a junket to because they want to see all of these away teams in the stadium. And they do travel very well. Some of these teams travel with, you know, 10 and 15,000, you know, people coming in to watch a game. And when you've got our proximity in terms of drivability from Arizona, from California, I think you'd get the natural fan base we have here in Las Vegas that's going to support it. You're going to get the Raiders fans that are currently in California, both Northern and Southern California. They'd come down, they'd fly in. Flights are relatively inexpensive. They'd fly in for eight regular season games a year. And you get the national folks that would come and have the chance to see an NFL game, which I think is a big opportunity. And you bring up an interesting point. You're talking about traveling from uh, Southern California to Las Vegas. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had a, during the fires, I tried to get to L.A. Mm -hmm. and, you know, 15 was closed. Yeah. I mean, it's a kind of a lifeline for Las Vegas. Maybe I should ask uh, Congresswoman Titus because, you know, it's an interstate highway. But what if, you know, what if anything, because, you know, I mean, you and I have talked about this over the years uh, on this show about, you know, getting trains, getting, you know, right. better highways, better roads. I mean, isn't that the most important thing that we need to do as a community as far as getting tourists in? I think you're absolutely spot on. I mean, that corridor going to Southern California, I-15, if something were to happen to block that. Now, you can have an accident that delays it for an hour or two, and you see what happens there. Traffic is black, backed up mm -hmm. for yeah. 10, 20 miles, which, you know, makes a commute, which would normally be three or four hours into six and seven and eight and nine hours. And people aren't going to come if that's how long right. the drive is. I don't know what could be done. I mean, would really be interested to see what the congresswoman has to say myself. If we could somehow get some assurance that you know there's it's widened, that there's a access road or something, because if if there were to be a, a disaster, a natural type disaster or an accident that would block that for an extended period of time, we would have a real problem in terms of you know getting people back and forth. Do you have, you see any real possibility of getting a high speed uh, train? We've talked about that uh, for years and years, and I followed it pretty closely with what was going on. And here again, that's something I think on the federal level that when the transportation secretary came in and leading up to your next guest uh, as it deals with the congresswoman, I mean, there's not the federal money that there used to be for, for trains, whether it be local, high-speed rail or, right. or what have you. Uh, I don't know if there's a capacity financially to do that. You would need a, a big, big investment. And I don't know if it would be ideal. It would be terrific to be able to do. Sure. But I don't think stopping it halfway in Bakerfield or Barstow would work. So we'll have to see. And what about the minor reel? What's the status of us having a minor reel, you know, directly from the airport into, well, into the strip and into downtown? Well, one of the things that we established this time around it, with this SNTIC co committee that, I, that I'm on is we're going to extend the monorail rail from, from MGM down to Mandalay Bay which is an additional extension, a third leg, so to speak, to tie up all three convention centers because there's going to be a station put behind the Venetia and the Sands for folks and a station out by Mandalay Bay. So all three convention centers would be tied up. Uh, then they would explore going to the airport. I mean, the, the credit rating of the monorail company suffered, obviously, when it went through the bankruptcy and the reorganization. So uh, down the line, I could see it potentially happening, but the immediate addition right now will be the monorail will be extended to Mandalay Bay, which would be potentially close to both of the football sites. Last year there was a lot of controversy with um, Uber and Lyft. Uh, how's that working out? It's difficult. Uh, there's approximately, what I'm being told, 20,000 drivers that are driving part-time for one or both of the companies. Uh, the cab companies are claiming that they're not following the rules, but that's a legislative mandate that came down from Carson City that we followed, that we put uh, an ordinance in place that should govern it. We haven't had any difficulties in terms of getting payment at the airport, which is where uh, we have a little bit more control than other areas. So it seems to be working out, and it's created some jobs on the uh, Uber Lyft side, but it's certainly cost a lot of business on the cab side. And I know they've cut back in terms of drivers and having so many cars out because you just you're backing them up so far at the hotels. There's just so many people out there. Yeah. Well, County Commissioner Steve Sisolak, thank you so much for being here. And it's a pleasure. It's always great to see you. Thank you. Good to friend. see you again. We'll be right back with Congresswoman Dina Titus. When sorry is not enough. Enough said.
Call Ed. EdBernstein.com.